Hi guys, it's Anthony Molinara from O'Brien Real Estate with another edition of the Eastern Weekly Property News for 2020, where real estate information, of course, is on the house. With people having a little more time on their side, they are generally asking numerous questions to their suppliers and utility companies because those that don't ask, well, they simply don't know. You'll either receive a yes, a no, or maybe. We all know the old saying, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I urge you to ask your insurance company, ask your electricity and gas supplier, ask your bank, and even ask your council in regards to a discount or a better deal. Remember in the cost to win a new customer costs 10 times more than to keep one. It's that time of the year again, where all property owners receive their rates and valuation notices for the coming year. Surprisingly, councils have decided to not freeze any rate increases and are forging ahead with the 2.5% cap increase that was determined on the 31st of December 2019. Now in many cases, individual rate bills may increase or decrease by more or less than the 2.5% cap amount. Rate payers have the opportunity to object to the valuation placed on their property, which ultimately determines most of the increase. Now over the valuation period of the 1st of January 2019 to the 1st of January 2020, most suburbs across Melbourne have flatlined in growth. And as a service to property owners, you can call upon your local O'Brien real estate agent to assess and more importantly assist you with price data in your suburb to ensure your increase is in line with the market increase. Now this can help you should you decide to object to the valuation placed on your property. The good news this week is with many stay at home Aussies, uh, they're showcasing a strong desire to upgrade their homes during the pandemic. Now as we walk our neighborhoods, we are noticing they are looking the best they ever have. Gardens are very well manicured. There's many landscaping projects being undertaken, lots of paint jobs, new fences and decks, and even the cars in the driveways are squeaky and sparkling clean. Our streets have never looked better and the judging for the most attractive and cleanest street for the municipalities will be a hard one to judge this year. People are making change during the pandemic and we expect Australia to follow a, a similar pandemic induced trend to the US where people are increasingly moving out of apartments and moving into single story family homes. It is also expected that businesses based in and around central Melbourne will also look to move to the suburbs. Property numbers around the state are subdued as you would expect. There were no auctions across the state as reported by CoreLogic RP data with all six auctions scheduled being withdrawn from market. The sales numbers for the week came in at 800 and to give you a comparison to Sydney, they recorded a whopping 2,150 sales for the last week. Now, as you can appreciate, most of the sale numbers in Victoria are coming from regional Vic due to private inspections being possible and the good news continues for regional Victoria with the necessary trigger points being reached in the Victorian government's roadmap. Regional real estate agents as of today, the 16th of September, will now be able to hold auctions outdoors with up to 10 people in addition to the current private inspection clauses. And lastly, looking at this graph supplied by Heron Todd White, it's their September review of the National Property Clock which they released earlier in the month. You will notice Melbourne has slid down just slightly to now firmly be in the declining market mode. Now that's all for this week. I'm Anthony Molinaro and remember, the information provided is of a general nature. You should always seek independent legal, financial, taxation or other advice in relation to your unique circumstance. Thank you so much for watching and until next week, it's bye for now.